Hello, here we have a Singer 1924 straight stitch only sewing machine. It's a class 15 sewing machine. And the serial number is G0642908. And um, this does have the stitch selector here. And that's the, this is the longest stitch, shortest stitch, or just sewing in one place. There's no reverse, so there's a couple techniques people used back in the day to get their lock stitch, and we'll cover that. Uh, but first, uh, I'll show you how to, well, let's take a look around the machine. Uh, I've repa replaced the cord from the uh, motor to the pedal, and the pedal to the wall. I left the light, the light works. I left the light cord there because uh, the original cord or the cord that's with it is just fine. Um, <clears throat> What makes a class 15 uh, singer distinguishable from the rest is that they'd have the, the the tension assembly off to the side of the machine. So when you are sewing and you're looking at your project, they thought that maybe the tension dial there would be distracting. So that's uh, why that's kind of the idea behind that. And here's our bobbin winder assembly, and we'll go over that uh, here shortly. But let's take a look at the back really quickly. Uh, all the machines that I rescue or repair, um, I kind of bring back to their, their original state. But this one here, I kind of like the, the patina. I didn't want to sh shine and polish everything. I like the patina that it had, so I just kind of let it be. The motor here is a .53 amp motor, and it's belt driven. And uh, another thing is you can remove the motor and use a hand crank. And this Singer does come with this hand crank. So that is very good if uh, power goes out or you're, uh, you live off grid and you want to be able to uh, create uh, garments and repair fabric, uh, you know, with no power. So we'll get to that. That's really one of the big selling features of this machine. Okay, so to wind the bobbin, since it's a class 15 sewing machine, uh, it takes class 15 bobbins. Uh, I'm just going to wind a, a, a generic plastic uh, bobbin. So, we'll put the thread on the spool pin up here. And there's a little notch right here. We're going to run this thread, Just it just lays right on the notch. And then I am going to thread the bobbin inside out through the little hole. And now I'll put it on this post. Hope you can see that post. This little post here slides right on. And if I hold the tire, spin the, kind of spin this around, um, it should click into place here. This little notch. Once it's clicked into place, you push it down until it clicks, and then you're engaged. So I move the tail out of the way, and then we have to. The final things we need to do is put the thread through this little guide here. It moves back and forth so it uh, distributes the thread on the bobbin evenly. And then finally, there's this little notch here, just a little thread guide that feeds this part evenly. So, um, and then you need to disengage the hand wheel by holding the hand wheel and turning this wheel towards you. And that disengages the needle bar. And now we'll hold the tail end of this and we'll step on the pedal and begin winding the bobbin. Basically like that. I'm not going to wind a bunch of thread on here because I already have a bobbin in the bobbin case. But you can see uh, that's how that works. I have the focus set to one focal plane, so if I get close, don't be upset that if it's out of focus because uh, I don't have a very high end camera for this application. So let's go to the next step. We'll go ahead and disengage this by pressing this little lever. 
and then we'll just put this bobbin off to the side. Um, so the bobbin is in a bobbin case that's under here below the needle plate. This is more of the, one of the metal style bobbins and it's fine whichever one you use it should be fine. Some machines are picky about their bobbins but this particular machine it could be an original bobbin or one you just got off Amazon. So I always put the bobbin so it looks like a, a, a Q. The thread's coming on the left hand side before I drop it into the bobbin case. And then the only notch on the on the opening is there. Slide it through the notch, through this little leaf, a lip, and through that opening. Now you are you have it threaded in there. Now you just pop it in the bottom. And I just stuff this all down in there. Slide the plate closed. And now the thread the top of the machine. And the spool pin instead of going to this notch there's a notch almost the same as this one only towards the back hope you can see that so we'll go over to this notch straight down there's two tension discs here we'll go between these tension discs around to the front of the machine but then around this arm behind this arm like that and then we have to thread this little spring here. And there's just a little opening. There's really only one way to thread it. it kind of takes two hands. And now you can kind of see it has a little tension. Then we'll go through here. Come on. Oh. There we go. Does that do that right? Or I screw it up. Yeah, I got it kind of twisted around here. I don't know how that happened, but it did. Hold on just a second. Don't mean to confuse you. I think I had it right the first time. Let's put it back around there. Okay. Okay. Alright, now we got it through here. Now there's a thread guide here. Just take two hands and it kind of pops into place. Then there's the final thread guide right next to the needle here. So we'll slide that into there and then we will thread the needle left to right. And when you put the needles into these machines, the shaft of the needle faces towards the hand wheel. Once you have the needle threaded, you'll um, turn the hand wheel towards you. The needle goes down below the needle plate. And as you're holding this thread, it should pick up that bobbin, bobbin thread. So now you have two threads. So I'll take the top thread, feed it through the slot and the presser foot, and then put them both towards the back of the machine. And now we're ready to sew. So we'll grab a piece of fabric and we'll lay the fabric down here. Let's see if I have that doubled up. So like I said, this is a straight stitch only. So to put a lock stitch, one of the techniques is to just use your hand crank and put in a couple stitches. Turn the fabric around. Carefully line it up. Go back a stitch or two. Let me get this out of the way then turn it back again and then begin sewing and um, there's another technique where you can go just a couple stitches and then just lift the needle up pull the fabric towards you carefully and then just lay it back down and do that there's a third technique that I saw someone 
say that was popular back in the day. It takes a little bit of skill, but you could impress your friends if you perfected it. And I'll show you when I get to the end of the stitch. As you're sewing, lift the presser foot up and pull the fabric towards you and to, uh, to give you that lock stitch. So watch carefully, see if I can do it. Here we go. Something like that, but I know I got it off off uh, kilter there because uh, I'm trying to not tip the uh, camera with my leg. So anyway, that's basically that's basically that. So let's see. Take a look at the stitch here. Very nice, even stitch. And hopefully you can see that. Um, and that was at the longest length of stitch. And um, if you wanted a finer stitch, you just move this up a little bit. And that's about it for that. Uh, the final thing about this machine, which is uh, definitely, uh, like I mentioned before, a big selling point, is this hand crank. So let me show you how to put the hand crank on really quickly. It is super simple. And a very handy, especially if you have to deal with power outages or you're just preparing for the worst and you want to be productive in your community. Uh, so what you'll need is a screwdriver. There's a little bolt here, or a screw here. You just unscrew that. Completely take it out. And then that holds the motor to the whole machine, so it loosens the belt, remove the motor. Now, let me grab my screw so I don't lose it. Now everything's kind of connected together, it's still connected to the light. But if you don't have electricity, you're not going to need the light anyway. So there's just a little screw that holds this light. Just take, this, take the light out. But I'm not going to do the, that for this purpose. And also you can take the belt off by taking the wheel off. But it's not that important. I just want to show you how to engage the hand wheel. So you, this screw that came out of the motor just goes right in here with the hand wheel. I'm not paying attention to what my screen's showing you. I apologize. And I find the hole. And we'll just get it started here. And we got it in there. Now this, there's a little flap that engages or disengages. It just slides into one of these spokes. And this little wheel, you just pull this little thing out of the way, pops in. And now you're ready to sew. You just simply turn, and it will start sewing. Let's see what's in the way here. Okay. So at the way it's geared is you turn what's natural to you forward and it gears so this goes back the proper way to give you a stitch. And it's very nice and smooth action. And as you can see, that's how you sew. And also if you need to disengage this to wind the bobbin you, and you engage this, it works just the same. It's winding the bobbin. Nothing different. Disengage that. And then re-engage the wheel. And you're sewing. How's that for 1924? So this is a class 15 straight stitch 1924 sewing machine. You have electric or manual option here. So we have that available at the Enchanted Forest. Also feel free to visit our website for other machines that we have. We also restore and um, service vintage sewing machines. Thanks for watching.